Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartitsu Lab and today I am doing my videos in the rain. But bad guys don't stop in the rain, so neither will I. This particular session we're going to be looking at the stick and the hypothesis and, and the working belief that we have in the Bartitsu Lab that two hands on the stick is pretty much always better than one. Now we see in lots of the Bartitsu source material lots of academic stick fighting. So you see Pierre Vigny, you'll see others from a Lacan tradition and they'll be very much up here with the stick they'll be doing fencing style blocks there'll be some two-handed blocks but there'll be lots of what is essentially academic cane fencing academic stick fighting and you'll see lots of rather loose parries one-handed blows now when you put those into a reality matrix so when you put those into a sparring environment you know if you were to take something like that into say a dog brothers sparring environment from a screamer where people are grappling they're punching they're making concerted efforts to hit and hurt each other that's when you start to realize that much of the stick work that we tend to use in bartitsu falls apart now i've seen it fall apart i've trained it i've sparred it i've sparred it against other people that do bartitsu other people that do filipino systems other stick fighting systems and i typically find that the one-to-one -one cane fencing system works brilliant when we're doing it in assault level contact so um, for example if you're doing light contact savat savat assault you know, if you're doing light contact le can, you know or medium contact le can, again we tend to be tapping each other we're not putting a huge amount of effort into hurting a human being we're putting effort into scoring points land a shot on the head shot on the wrist but we're doing so respectfully as soon as you get rid of that and into a, a messy combat style of fray with the weapon, which is what we train for in the Bartitsu lab, suddenly we need to reevaluate how we use a stick. And obviously, this is a this is a hooked cane. You can get more traditional ball-headed canes, all manner of sticks really. But what we find is that two hands often are better than one. And here are some of the reasons why, in my opinion. So first thing of all, we're training in a self-defense system. And if we're looking at habitual acts of physical violence, what we know as HAPV, there are often multiples and there are often weapons. And sometimes we don't know if there are going to be multiples and weapons until we're already in the fight. OK, now, standard practice tells me that if I've got a stick and I've got it in one hand and there is more than one opponent, it only takes one of those people to grab that stick momentarily before it becomes our stick. It's no longer my weapon while his friend belabors my face with the end of a bottle, with a knife, or just keeps punching me in the face. I've lost my weapon. Against multiples, a one-handed hold is just too susceptible to being foiled, to being grabbed. If I hit you and it doesn't knock you out and you grab it even clumsily, in those three seconds it takes me to withdraw, I'm already being pummeled by someone else. So we find that we get much better control of the weapon. We want to own the weapon. We want to hold the most powerful thing in the fight. In this instance, it's this hard, heavy cane. So I want to make sure that I keep hold of that through the fight. So again, stability and safety. When we're fighting multiples, I want to make sure I don't lose this weapon. And in the academic style, we can have it snatched off us. Even the, even the period sources, as soon as we move to multiples, we're holding the weapon two hands. So why not assume that we're going to have multiples from the off? Because it doesn't make a huge amount of difference whether we stand in an academic fencing posture or a two-handed posture. It might be one opponent now, but in 30 seconds, it might be five. So I'm better off starting with two hands on the weapon. Second thing I can do is I can use my leverage. So look at my hands being apart. I can have my hands close together and have maximum range on that stick. So from here, I can still hit as far. So I can slide my hand down the weapon and use it for a powerful two-handed blow we're swinging a baseball if we're hitting a cricket bat we use two hands for a reason we are biomechanically stronger and more powerful with two hands on the weapon so if we've got two hands here i can really whip this out with some force with some gusto so it's safer the weapon doesn't leave my hands as easily it's more powerful in that i can use leverage based strikes and we train this a lot in particular how to leverage down the stick to make it a powerful telling blow because we might only have two blows in that entire fight so they've got to be worth their while And again, we can do that backhand, we can do that forehand, we can do that horizontal, we can even do that upwards diagonal. We can always use two hands on the weapon. So again, 
keeps us in control, which is good against multiples. It means that the weapon can't be taken. It means I can be more final. So if there are multiples and there are weapons, I only need to hit you once to put you down. I'm not interested in point scoring against your wrist or your face or your legs. I want you down, unconscious, dead, doesn't really matter. I want you out of the game. And that's where two-handed blows give you the power they need. Also, for most canes, they're not massively strong. So this might only survive a fight of three proper hits, a fight of three powerful blows. You pick up any cane from a charity shop, it's not going to last a continued affray. So when I do use it, I want to make sure I'm getting every penny's worth of power out of it. The next thing is shot selection. It's much harder and a much more attuned skill to be accurate with one hand. Good fencers can do it. They can hand snipe you, can they head snipe you. They can do all sorts of great things, but it requires accuracy and skill. And those things fall apart soon as the fight becomes a real fight, becomes something of importance. Whether it's a cane, whether it's a stick, whether it's a lump of two by four, if I'm trying to fight you one handed, I need a level of cool, which is unnatural to most human beings. I need to be able to maintain my cool and fence with you. Most people can't do that. So with two hands on the stick, I have much better control over where the stick eventually goes. And that's another important point about how we stick fence in the Bartitsu lab. It's about knowing where to hit, not just how to hit, but where to hit. So we focus on hitting to the temple, to the jaw, into the throat, to the solar plexus, to the liver, to the groin, to the kneecap, to the elbow. So hard things that can break and soft things that really hurt you. So knowing your anatomy and knowing what effect a stick will have when it hits that place of anatomy is really important. Okay, so knowing where to hit people makes a lot of sense. You need to practice and drill that. It's no good just practicing on the heavy bag. You need to practice on bob dummies, on each other. Where am I putting that weapon? Behind the ear, into the throat, into the eye, into the groin. You need to know where it's going. With two hands, I can manipulate and manage that much better. I can decide eye socket. I can decide solar plexus. I can decide groin. And my ability to miss is much less. In the same way that shooting with a rifle is a lot more accurate than shooting with a pistol. I've got two hands, I have a lot more balance, a lot more control. So again, we're thinking multiples, we're thinking real violence, we're thinking weapons. Me being able to hit you very hard, that is with a two-handed blow. Me being able to keep hold of that weapon, a two-handed grip. And me being able to aim that weapon somewhere vital and final, again, using this two-handed methodology, is really, really, really key. Also allows us to move pretty rapidly into stick grapples. So going from a one-handed stick into a stick grapple often means that we lose the stick. And if you watch a lot of full contact Filipino systems, if you watch a lot of Dog Brothers, we go stick, 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 and then we both grab each other and both of us leave the sticks. This happens a lot. With two hands, I've got some good options before I lose that stick. As we clash, as we get too close, I can now get this stick, I can put it over your head. I can crush that into your neck. I can crush this behind your back. I can manipulate your body with the stick then do other things with my off hand. So again, with two hands on the stick, I can hook it behind your head, which is a great impulsive, you know, doesn't require much training, whop it behind their head, you can rag people around, throw them on the floor really easily. Put it behind your back, I've essentially got a pretty decent body lock, I can lift you up, dump you easy. When you start to do those things one-handed and try and do all your flows and locks and things that are popular in Eastern martial arts, it tends to fall to shit when you have to do it properly and there's pain involved. As soon as there's pain involved, you suddenly forget how to do that fancy lock flow that you knew before. So two hands on the stick, really important for power generation, for maintaining your stick, for picking your shots and being able to do the easiest of the clinches and grapples with that particular stick. And again, we can still be percussive with our other weapons because I've got my stick like this. I can still punch. I can still punch. I can punch up, down, hook, hook. I can fire straights. So again, don't forget when you're learning Bartitsu with the stick, you've still got your feet, still got your head, still got your elbows, still got your shoulders, all of those ancillary techniques you can still have. And with two hands, you've still got them. So a lot of people say, ah, well, I use my off hand to punch. I can still use my off hand to punch and maintain my stick. So again, making sure you know how to use your entire body for combat with the weapon is really important. So I'd say, if you do look into using the stick as an earnest weapon for self-defense, and you don't have to use that stick for your entire mobility. Duncan McNulty does a really great session on if you have to have a stick, there are different techniques for you, things that don't require that stick coming off the ground. 
But if you pick up a stick, have a stick for self-defense, you pick up two by four, my advice is two hands at all times, learn to hit hard using a leverage grip, learn to keep hold of your weapon at all costs, learn how to accurately use that weapon in close combat with bayonet thrusts into places that cause some real damage, and finally, learn how to use your entire body in combat. So using the punches, the kicks, the knees, the elbows that you need alongside the stick. Hopefully you found that useful. A uh, little bit out of the normal for what most Bartitsukas do with the stick. But this is how we do it at the lab. Hope you find it interesting. Give it a play and let me know how it goes.